Thank you. Oh, you ladies. <laughs> That's so fun. I really thought that she was going to say, let's all act like Jennifer Lopez is coming in. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you lost it on that one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, and thanks for trekking all the way down here. I was pretty sure it was just going to be my team here right in the front row. <laughs> Be like, yay, they love me. They have to say that. Um, yes. Thank you all. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to talking about this. Um, it has been something over the past few years, managing these um, distributed teams, you know, people working from home, people working all over the world, um, that I have really enjoyed, and I'm excited to bring some insights to you. Um, I really hate when speakers like make you raise your hand and do stuff, but I'm totally going to do it to you. So how, how many of you work in a global community team? How many of you are remote yourself? How many of you work with remote people? All right. You are in the right place. <laughs> Yay. Thank you. Um, and honestly, you guys, you all don't need me to tell you, right, the benefits of remote work, the, the statistics showing that companies are getting more remote and more global and all that, right? You are living it. So I'm going to skip all that junk that I initially thought I was going to put in here and realized I'm preaching to the choir, right? So let's get into some of the, the nitty gritty. Communication. It's already hard, right? Even with the person who's sitting right next to you, you sometimes forget, you know, there's a miscommunication and things. Maybe you're in a meeting. Everybody's in the same meeting. You're sitting at the same table looking at each other. And, and how often have you walked away from a meeting and realized that your colleague that was literally right next to you thought something else happened in that meeting, right? We've had that happen. It's okay. You don't have to raise your hand. They might be sitting next to you, right? It, it happens. So it's really hard to do when you're in the same place. So making it happen when you have this distributed team that you're remote, somebody else is remote, maybe it's a language barrier, all that stuff, right, makes it even more difficult. So first items I want to focus on is communication. And language and culture can really be a big one. Um, my, my biggest thing that I, that I will yell to the rooftops forever is always assuming good intent, and assuming that somebody else simply works differently than you do, right? If I'm working with a team um, that has a totally different culture, they may come at things a, d a little differently, right? There might be issues where, um, has, it, has anyone had an, had an issue where they're working with someone from, you know, another country, and there was kind of a, not a language barrier, but a cultural barrier on how you work, right? It happens. So assuming good intent and assuming that maybe they don't know the right word for whatever, or maybe they come at things differently, is, is, um, is a huge one. The other one is uh, sometimes it's a, in different societies, right? Um, male, female dynamics are very different. And you may be working with, as a female, you may be working with men who have a much harder time working with someone who's in a senior position or trying to tell them that they're, um, they're going to take your post down because they were rude or, you know, whatever the case is. Um, a couple tools I wanted to throw out. Uh, shout out to uh, on timezone.io. This is my uh, previous team at We Localize. Some of you are in the room. Holla! Yay! Um, I love this. I think this is actually by Buffer. And timezone.io is great because it gives you a visual of where everyone is in the world. Uh, there's so many times, you know, there are a million time zone apps. What I love about it is you put all their faces in there. You can see where everyone's at, all that good stuff. And World Chat Clock is a really great tool that allows you to actually It'll, it'll show you when you have time together. The funny thing is, um, at, a, at a previous role, uh, there was never a time. Because there was 24-7, somebody was always working. There's no great time to actually get everyone together. Um, the, the, the biggest thing that I can tell you when it comes to communication is pretend that everyone's remote. So what happens currently um, at OutSystems, we have, uh, you know, 800 people in a Lisbon office. 
So that means you may have five people sitting at the table having a conversation, and then you have two people calling in remote. And it's very difficult to have that conversation, right, when some of the people are having conversations together at the table and the people remote are like, what did you say? How did that happen? So one of the things that we do um, on our team is we have an agenda and take notes for every single meeting. Every one of our weekly meetings, we make that happen. And I've done that for years. Um, literally, I don't know, some of you may remember me from back in the day at Moz and our community team there. We had literally like seven years of weekly notes and you know all that stuff happening. And recording meetings whenever possible. Um, on a small team, maybe that's not the case, but if you have a large team where someone can't make it because of time zone issues or whatever the case is, having a place where they always know in this um, folder, right, you're going to have your meeting notes, you're going to have your recordings, all of this. Another thing I want to note is some of this stuff sounds very like, 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 yeah, you should already be doing that. But how many of you are actually doing this? Exactly. All right. That just made me feel better. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, and, and going beyond, <laughs> I had to put this smiley face over it because my colleague would kill me if I actually showed her face in this. Um, but one thing that happens a lot is you have, let's say you have to explain something. And how many times do you sit and you spend an hour on that perfect email and it's this long and maybe you've added your bullet points and you maybe have added some emoji to show that you're really cool about it. And you know, you've like highlighted things and you send it and two days later you say, well, why, why haven't you done that thing? And you realize like they never read it. Too long, didn't read. Nobody reads that crap. Like, right? You, you, you need a different approach to that. First of all, the approach of too long, didn't read is a great one, right? I have told my team over and over, like, nobody's going to read that. Give them this. Let them read the rest. Another one that I love, though, is sending a video instead. If you send a two-minute video that's like, OK, this is really important. I want you to take note of this. You don't have to put emoji and try to do all this stuff to make it and, and highlight things to make them aware that it's important, you can actually say, this is really important. And they will see in your face that you mean business <laughs> or you know, whatever the case is. Um, but having that video, and again, keeping it in that same folder, in that same location, everybody always knows where to go and how to find it, um, it has, has been a, a huge one. And I'll talk a bit more about it when I'm talking about training. How do you train? you know, sort of around the world. And this is a, a big one that helps you do that. So this is our, this is our picture. By the way, Neo is our mascot at OutSystems. He's so cute. Uh, one of the things we've also been recently talking about is over-communicating. Um, it is rarely a thing that you can over-communicate, right? Um, so often you think, Maybe within your team, you've communicated something, you've been talking about it, everybody's on top of things, but no one else in the company has any idea what you're doing or what's happening, right? Uh, David was talking about, you know, some of the thing that's sometimes what's really hard is getting the rest of the company to even know what's happening, to prove, it, prove our value, right? Make sure that you're communicating that not just within your team, but outside the team. Um, keeping those topics top of mind. You want to be that new car, you know, that you go buy, and all of a sudden you see the new car everywhere. It's a, I, I keep forgetting the name of the something effect. Um, but you want to be that shiny new car, right? That everyone's always like, oh, well, I saw that the community team was running these user groups. I should contact them about X, Y, Z, because now they're thinking all the time, community, community, user groups forums, whatever, whatever your thing is, right? And data. So this is um, on a monthly basis. We send an email. Uh, we send an email. We post it in several Slack channels. Um, we have uh, like our internal website that you can go to to find it. We're like, hey, everybody, as much as we can, this is the sort of big picture numbers of what's happening in the community. Right? And we've modified it over time. And we found like initially we, had, we were giving all this information and it was like 
it wasn't really showing the work that we were doing. So we've modified it and changed it over time. But actually showing, you could do it on a weekly basis. Um, more and more, we're trying to just give more information over and over, beat it into their heads. So they're like, yes, community. You want sales to be like, oh, community, marketing, oh, community, product, community, right? You want them thinking about us all the time. So what about learning? OK, how, how many have you have tried to or have you know, had to learn a new tool or something, and you've struggled because the person teaching you is, you know, somewhere else in a different time zone, um, anything like that. Hey, I, I heard some ha 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 ha. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> it can be really difficult. One of the things um, that I learned that we did quite a bit at in a previous role at We Localize was that the follow the sun strategy, right? So it, it maybe it starts in the US and you have this, you have a, a trainer, maybe you as a team leader or someone on the team puts together um, a video to train, you pass it to the next, you know, then you see that your team in Japan or China is waking up in the morning and you say, this big thing just happened and I have to train you on how to do it. Here's the video. And then I'm going to answer your questions. And you need to get as much as you can, because you're then going to train the folks in Europe when they wake up in the morning. And then they're going to come back around. When I wake up on the West Coast, which is like behind the rest of the world, I'm going to wake up again and check in with Europe and say, OK, let's make sure that that game of telephone that we just played actually you know, went the right way. Um, ha has anyone? Uh, had, had to sort of use this approach before, the, the pass the baton, right? Um, and, and having all those, again, the notes, the videos, all of those things to be able to actually send it around um, is, is extremely useful. You don't have days to wait for somebody to, uh, you know, to make sure that everybody can get on a call together, that sort of thing. And what about team spirit? To me, it's really important to make sure that you have a team of people that actually feel like they're on the same team. No matter where they are in the world, no matter what office they're in, no matter what their role is on the team, that they actually feel like they're a part of the team. So here are some of my fun, maybe silly tips for keeping the team together. Um, I will, every single day, say hello, good morning, whatever. I will often post pictures of something I'm doing. Um, I go to a boot camp at 5.30 in the morning. Ugh, I know. And I will sometimes, from boot camp, like send a picture of the ocean or, you know, what I, OK, it's Puget Sound. It's not the ocean, but it's water, right? Or something like that, um, just to, to, to give it. And then I, by the time I get back, I see that five other people have replied from with views out their windows or um, you know, that sort of thing. I used to do it when the team in Asia would get on in the morning, you know, 6 p.m. my time, I say, um, good morning, what does tomorrow look like? And I'm sure they were like, Jen, shut up. <laughs> we get it, we're in the future, right? Um, but it was one of those things that we kept at it. And then the next thing you know, I don't have to say it anymore. Everyone else is on the team. When they get up, and, you know, they come in, good morning, how's it going? This is what I'm doing today, that sort of thing. Um, posting pictures of when you're actually having fun at work. Um, so like I said, we have an office at OutSystems in Lisbon. We have hundreds of people there. So they um, do a great job of making sure those of us who are like sitting in our pajamas at home at 6 a.m. Uh, for calls and stuff are actually seeing, you know, what's going on? What are, what are the fun things happening? Dinners that are happening, that sort of thing. We use Slack. I know uh, some folks use Teams. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, there are lots of other ways to communicate. Um, I'm going to show you some tools and things. And it's not that those are the only tools you can use. What I want is to trigger in your head what are the things that I can be doing um, with my team and with the tools I have that can, that, that can trigger these as well. And sometimes it's just playing games and having some fun with memes. By the way, living my best OSUG life is right up front here if anyone wants to meet her. Um, I also had a previous thing where we had this game where uh, I would have uh, folks would send me a picture and I would add a little thing called Find J. And let me show you in the first picture, 
there's Jay. So it's this picture of Jay that I would hide all over, and sometimes it would take them, like, like I would post it in, the, in, in Skype in, the, in um, Apex morning, and by the time I would wake up again on West Coast, like they, nobody had found it yet, and I'd be like, yes! <laughs> they were like, you're getting too good at this. Um, but I started posting Jay everywhere. By the way, I asked Jay if he was okay with me doing that, and he loved it. I'm pretty sure he still does it, right? Or, he, he wishes somebody did it, I don't know. Right, but have some fun. Also, it's okay to uh, make, some, make things personal. Um, I love this Mario here, you know, he was moving and he's like, Mario's living room, like, that sucks. Um, scheduling coffee talk, I don't know how many times that, that I have a, a scheduled meeting and what we do is we talk about what you did over the weekend, right? It makes you feel connected makes you know like exactly what's happening in somebody's in, in somebody's um in somebody's world and show your face how many of you get on a skype call a slack call a, a google hangout and you don't turn your video on oh you're lying <laughs> i get up at six o'clock in the morning for meetings and i always have my video on and i tell them i am sorry you're getting morning jen <laughs> morning jen looks a little different Let's just say, <laughs> usually pajamas, but you would never know. Um, and, and online group cards. So this Kudo board, I love this. We actually haven't used it much, had to use it much here at OutSystems, but we localized, we used it all the time. It's essentially a way, you know how in the office, it's somebody's birthday and everybody's like passing the card as if they don't see you walking around with it. Well, this one, you can actually do it. Nobody will see it. It's a way to kind of do those cards and you know, congratulations and fun things like that and make your boss cry when she leaves and stuff like that. So boundaries, having expectations, knowing what's expected of you, whether you're leading the team and making sure that there are expectations or, or you're on the team and you know, okay, it's okay if I don't answer a Slack message at midnight. <laughs> so I tell them, don't answer, but I have to, I'm going to send this and then the answer. So set your work hours. Um, how many of you use Gmail for, for email? All right, so obviously Outlook, you know, there's tons of other ways, but I wanted to, again, get it in your head of doing the actions, not necessarily the specific tools, but in Gmail, native in Gmail now, right, you can set your working hours. And what happens is if I try to put a, an event on your calendar outside of those working hours, it pops up and says, this is outside of, of Veta's working hours. Do you still want to proceed? And I say, okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Right? It, it makes sure that, that if somebody on your team has to run and go pick up their daughter from school, that they're not going to get a meeting at that time and then feel weird about having to say, oh, I can't do it or, or whatever. Right? It actually shows. And then what we've started using at OutSystems is called Clockwise. It lets you set a ton more settings. Um, it, it lets you uh, actually say, right, um, when do you start each day? It's, it, it takes what started in uh, out native um, Google <laughs> Gmail, sorry, I just lost my train of thought, and it lets you extend that in a lot of different ways. And what about um, calendar etiquette and, and um, email sending and such, right? Uh, when your boss sends you an email at 10 o'clock at night, it becomes a, like, like, oh, it's okay, I'm supposed to be working at 10 o'clock at night because my boss is sending me emails, right? So oftentimes what I do is I will schedule them to go out at an appropriate time for my team. I don't want to forget that I need to send that email, but instead of just sending it and making them feel like, oh, I got the message, I should do something about this, it comes in at their 8 or 9 a.m., uh, in, at a more, more appropriate time. And how many of you knew that Gmail actually has this now as a part of Gmail? Okay, good. But you can also, again, enhance that with Boomerang, which lets you um, make sure not only send it at a, at a different time, but you can send it weeks at a different time. You can also set it up so that if you have a response um, that, or you send an email, you can set it to ping you if somebody has not responded. 
And thank you, Slack. How many of you use Slack? Right? Uh, they just started showing like when your colleague, the time zone of your colleague. So if I start typing to someone and it says, you know, it's 10 p.m. their time, you're like, oh, it, it's in my brain now. This is the wrong time to message them. I'm going to save this for the right time. And then actually going in and setting your do not disturb, right? You can set so that you don't get those messages. Because I know me, if I get a message on my phone, I'm looking at it, right? So just set it so that those messages don't come through. Um, accountability and trust. So if you have a global team, right, you have to, and sorry, but I totally stole this. Um, you have to trust the people in the other locations, rather, whether it's around the world, whether it's across the country. I mean, three hour dif difference from the east and west coast can be really difficult also, right? Let alone when you add eight hours, 12 hours, 16 hours. So having somebody um, uh, knowing exactly what your role is and what somebody else's role is and who the backup is, and if this thing stops running, I know that I don't have to wait 24 hours for the next person. Um, this person's a backup in this time zone, and, and you know I can do that. And having a local resource. Now, local could mean in a similar time zone. That, so if someone on my team, if it's 2 o'clock in the morning, they don't have to wait until I wake up uh, to you know, feel like they get approval on something. They have somebody in their time zone that they can go to and say, I'm really struggling with this. Can you help me? Or is it okay? Can I do this? Is it, you know, I need to run something past you, whatever the case is. Something where, you know, you have a person that you can go to and a person as a manager that I feel comfortable with them going to and not feeling like, you know, nobody's like, oh, they're stepping on my toes or any of that stuff. No. And yes, thing one and thing two. Um, I'm going to just quickly go through this. I have... I could talk for hours and hours about team strengths and know their strengths and, and play to those strengths. Two tests that I just wanted to do, a shout out, the Strength Finder test, it is a paid test, um, is a really great way to sort of find those, uh, those strengths that someone has. And then the High Five test is a free one, which you know doesn't give you quite as much, but has great information. Um, I see we already have folks coming in. I'm going. Uh, Cross-training, making sure that the T-shaped team where everybody has a bit of information, you know, knows enough to do the job, but is uh, deep in certain areas. I have a few tools. I think I've gone over a bit. I, I'm t am I chatting? I'm All right, I'm going to go. I'm going. Um, <laughs> some, of the, some of my favorite tools that help make sure that, that everyone's sort of working in the same fashion, right? Again, people are all over. You, you, you know, you want to make sure you're up to date. Grammarly is a great one. I know that there are also some issues. You might need to check with your IT person as to whether you're allowed to use Grammarly because of the way that it works. So I'm just throwing that out there. I've gotten feedback before of like, don't tell people to use it. So just my heads up. Um, Figma is another tool. It's a great design tool that allows you, um, lets your designers make these really cool things and then lets you um, sort of extend from there, right? You get, you, you, everybody can feel like they're a designer without having to actually design anything. And thanks for introducing me to that in the front row. Um, so toggle and rescue time. Um, Rescue time is great because it's a set it and forget it. So a lot of the tools you already use, maybe Gmail. Um, I know that Microsoft also has this where uh, you know each week you get a report that tells you, you spent so much time with this, you've been talking to this person. What I like about rescue time is it, it, it gives you, as a team, you can look at it and say, how much time am I actually spending in on Twitter or something, or how much time am I spending in Slack? And you can actually, as a team, say, am I overdoing it? Am I spending too much? Am I, you know, um, and it's, it's sort of a general view. And then uh, Toggle is just a good way to keep track. I never do it as make the team do it and submit time or anything, but as a way to keep track of what you're working on, make sure you're not working, spending too much time on things. So communication is hard. Let's make it a little bit easier. Use the follow this on strategy. It's okay to get a little personal, right? Keep some, create some team spirit. 
set your clear and um, expectations and boundaries and get that team all set up for, for success with accountability and trust. Here are some resources that I mentioned and I'm assuming ducks will go out at some time also and thank you very much. <laughs>